and they were cool. It was a good walk there. It was great. Set intention. It was good. Yeah, that's good. That's great. Thank you. Thanks. We just got one more picture, Chris. Oh, did some backup with the uh, sugar roll. Greffé du foie qui a décidé de traverser le Canada à pied et il s'est arrêté aujourd'hui à Trois-Rivières. L'homme que vous allez rencontrer dans ce reportage traverse le Canada à pied. C'est un greffé du foie qui fait cela pour sensibiliser à l'amélioration du système de dons d'organes. Céline Leboeuf du secteur Pointe-du-Lac est en attente d'une greffe du foie depuis deux ans. C'est arrivé euh, un examen de routine. Ça faisait des années que je n'avais pas passé d'examen de routine. J'ai passé une prise de sang et ils ont découvert une anomalie au niveau de mon bilan de foie. Elle a fait la rencontre de George Marcello, qui a lui-même reçu une transplantation du foie en 1995. Le militant a entrepris une traversée du Canada pour l'amélioration du système de dons d'organes. Plus de 4000 Canadiens figurent sur les listes d'attente. We are encouraging people uh, to please uh, pick up uh, uh, a donor card, your driver's license, health card. Please discuss with your family. George Marcello entreprend sa troisième tournée à travers le Canada pour la cause des dons d'organes. Aujourd'hui, il a voulu sensibiliser les jeunes de l'école secondaire des pionniers. Je crois que maintenant, que plus de personnes vont donner, signer leur carte. Et moi, je trouve que c'est important. Et ça permettra à plus de gens de passer aux hôpitaux puis de se faire soigner. Par cette mobilisation, George Marcello espère aussi faire changer la loi canadienne. Il souhaite que le gouvernement inverse les règles que tous les Canadiens soient donneurs et que ceux qui refusent le signifient. Uh, Celine, please do not give up hope. De garder espoir, c'est ce que George Marcello a mentionné à Céline Leboeuf. Cette dernière retient le message du militant et compte bien poursuivre son œuvre après avoir reçu sa transplantation. Je vais trouver un moyen de sensibiliser les gens, euh, ne serait-ce que l'entourage ou euh, les amis, ou à euh, en parler, c'était... C'est avec ça qu'on peut changer les choses. Dany Côté, TQS à Trois-Rivières. Nouvelle de simple clé. Georges Marcello a reçu une transplantation du foie. Il a entrepris une périple de marche à travers le pays, à travers le Canada, pour améliorer le système de dons d'organes. Il s'est arrêté à Trois-Rivières aujourd'hui pour sensibiliser les triclumés. Et d'ailleurs, il y a une dame en attente d'une greffe qui était là pour le rencontrer. Dany Côté. Céline Leboeuf du secteur Pointe-du-Lac est en attente d'une greffe du foie depuis deux ans. C'est arrivé euh, un examen de routine. Ça faisait des années que je n'avais pas passé d'examen de routine. J'ai passé une prise de sang et ils ont découvert une anomalie au niveau de mon bilan de foie. Elle a fait la rencontre de George Marcello, qui a lui-même reçu une transplantation du foie en 1995. Le militant a entrepris une traversée du Canada pour l'amélioration du système de dons d'organes. Plus de 4000 Canadiens figurent sur les listes d'attente. We are encouraging people uh, to please uh, pick up uh, uh, a donor card, your driver's license, health card. Please discuss with your family. George Marcello entreprend sa troisième tournée à travers le Canada pour la cause des dons d'organes. Aujourd'hui, il a voulu sensibiliser les jeunes de l'école secondaire des pionniers. Je crois que maintenant, que plus de personnes vont donner, signer leur carte. Et moi, je trouve que c'est important. Et ça permettra à plus de gens de passer aux hôpitaux puis de se faire soigner. Par cette mobilisation, George Marcello espère aussi faire changer la loi canadienne. Il souhaite que le gouvernement inverse les règles. Que tous les Canadiens soient donneurs et que ceux qui refusent le signifient. Uh, Celine, please do not give up hope. De garder espoir, c'est ce que George Marcello a mentionné à Céline Leboeuf. Cette dernière retient le message du militant et compte bien poursuivre son œuvre après avoir reçu sa transplantation. Je vais trouver un moyen de sensibiliser les gens, euh, ne serait-ce que l'entourage ou euh, les amis, ou euh, à en parler, c'était... C'est avec ça qu'on peut changer les choses. Là.
Danny Côté, TQS à Trois-Rivières. Un homme de Toronto est venu à Trois-Rivières aujourd'hui pour sensibiliser les gens à l'importance des dons d'organes. George Marcello a reçu une grève du foie et depuis ce temps, il a traversé trois fois le Canada à pied pour faire passer son message. Il a d'ailleurs invité des élèves de l'école secondaire des pionniers à prendre part à une marche au flambeau symbolique aujourd'hui. George Marcello souhaite que le don d'organes soit automatique au Canada et que ceux qui ne veulent pas faire partie de cette liste fassent retirer leur nom. Ce geste aujourd'hui a beaucoup touché une dame de Trois-Rivières qui est en attente d'une greffe. C'est sûr que ça m'encourage. Puis je me dis, ben, je, je lève mon chapeau. Je suis pas certaine que moi, je serais capable de faire ça. Je vais sûrement faire quelque chose après. Je ne sais pas quoi. Je vais sûrement euh, aimer euh, rencontrer des gens pour les sensibiliser, euh, d'en parler, puis de dire, euh, tu sais, c'est euh, chacun porte son flambeau à sa manière. Je trouve qu'il n'y a pas assez de personnes qui, qui en donnent. Il faudrait, faudrait sensibiliser plus. Well, it is one move that can save a lot of people. Oh my goodness, it's the news. It's the news. Okay, yeah, the torch is there, I can see it. A appris il y a six mois que son système immunitaire avait décidé, comme il le dit lui-même, d'attaquer ses reins. Ils étaient plus de 100 à emboîter le pas dans cette marche de solidarité et de sensibilisation. Tente de donneur compatible peut être longue. On a fait signer peut-être environ 100 personnes cette semaine devant nous qu'on a vu qu'il avait signé. Puis ces 100 personnes-là, ça a pu aider à sauver 800 personnes. C'est extraordinaire. C'est pas juste pour moi, c'est plein de monde, je suis pas tout seul. mes amis qui me disaient, t'as les yeux jaunes. Michael Morissette, également du séminaire salésien, avait 9 ans, lui, quand un premier problème de santé s'est manifesté. Aujourd'hui, il est soudé à son grand frère Anthony, qui a permis que se réalise la grève de moelle osseuse dont il avait besoin. Je pense qu'il avait plus de chances de gagner au loto 649 que de gagner de... d'avoir de l'or. Il Oui. Oh là là. Et mon frère était compatible à 6 sur 6. Hein? Nous sommes des parents, et c'est une chance sur un million, mais lui, il a eu plus de possibilités. Mais euh, c'était incroyable qu'il ait été à 6 sur 6. Euh, C'est vraiment un miracle. On fait une minute de silence finalement pour euh, la générosité de ces noms-là qui sont sur Ici les... sont inscrits les noms de milliers de donneurs, des ambassadeurs de la santé, pour avoir donné la vie en héritage. Et le message est reçu. Je pense qu'on peut transmettre la vie, puis c'est une bonne manière de le faire. Ben moi, c'est un peu à cause de mon frère, là, parce qu'il est décédé à cause de ça. Oui, oui, quand oui. j'étais arrivée à la maison, j'ai dit, signé à la carte. Quand on a appris la nouvelle, on pouvait, on peut pas l'aider, Vincent, mais on pouvait faire quelque chose pour faire bouger les choses. À Chéron, pour l'occasion, le fondateur de Step by Step a invité les jeunes à continuer de paver la voie. Please, lead the way. Merci. Marcel Gagnon, TV à Sherbrooke. Bonsoir Valérie. Bonsoir Stéphane. Vous êtes au Cafoutino. Oui, pour une bonne cause. C'est tout ce que je peux vous dire pour l'instant. Il a reçu une transplantation de kidney et de pancréas. Et il a reçu ça. Et c'est vraiment la seule raison pour laquelle il est encore vivant. Un de mes amis est encore sur la liste. Donc, vraiment, oui, pour un kidney. They're dedicating the relay here to the memory of Yannick de Grasse, the young hockey player who died in an accident six years ago. Yvette de Grasse says her son was full of life. She likes to think because of the organ donation, he's still alive yeah. somewhere. De Grasse has told his parents he wanted his organs donated if he died. They respected that wish, but they say it wasn't easy. And they recommend that other parents do what they did. The need is great. I'm waiting for a liver transplant. I've been waiting for 17 years now. Knowles was diagnosed at birth with a fatal liver condition. He's still alive because of 20 operations in years in the hospital. I've seen a lot of my friends pass away in the hospital because of waiting. I've seen a lot of good things. A lot of people have, uh, some people have received organs and that's great and they live healthy lives after that. But there's a shortage and we need to fix it. The torch is back on the road to Victoria by next summer. 4,000 Canadians who are on a waiting list for a transplant are counting on more people signing their donor cards. They say, don't take them with you. My slogan is, uh, please don't take your organs to heaven. Heaven knows we need them here. John Brad, CTV News. ...economy and Quebec's parental leave program. The students are relaying a torch across Canada, appealing to people to sign their donor cards. Katia Habra and Louis-Philippe Savaria, the city's representatives, carried the torch to City Hall today, passing it on to Mayor Tremblay. 
4,000 Canadians are on waiting lists for organs and tissue. Thank you, Jay. You're welcome. Okay. Well, coming up, the American presidential election stirs excitement, even in Canada. Later, what makes Ottawa a tourist draw? Right now. <laughs> Immaculata High School co-president Simon Sweeney and Nicole Perron had the honor of carrying the torch of life through Ottawa. The torch run is aimed at addressing the critical shortage of organ and tissue donations in Canada. The torch left St. John's, Newfoundland on October 1st and will complete its journey in Iqaluit on June 20th. Over 100 students will eventually participate in the relay across Canada. someone you love needs an organ transplant, chances are you'll be waiting a long time. Some 4,000 Canadians need an organ or tissue transplant. The problem is a shortage of donors. Well, two young people brought that message to Parliament Hill this morning. Nicole Perron and Simon Sweeney are students at Immaculata School High School in Ottawa, and they brought the Torch of Life and its message promoting organ and tissue donations. This is part of a cross-country campaign where students bring the torch to their local communities. This morning, they passed the torch on to representatives of three political parties. The initiative was started several years ago by George Marcelo, a man who was lucky enough to get a liver transplant. We need to, to get more people to get involved in this, and we need more people to understand how important it is to become an organ donor and to share this wish with their family. I strongly support organ donations and wish to encourage others to feel the same because I believe we have a duty to save the lives of others when given the opportunity. Every other day, people die waiting for organ donations. Let's change that. The Torch of Life campaign will continue across Canada, ending up in Victoria on June the 20th. I want to begin by thanking George for your work to create this powerful symbol, the Torch of Life. It's gained a lot of attention, it's traveled to hundreds of communities, it's even been blessed by the Pope. But as with any journey, it started with a single step, and you, George and Marcella, were the person with the hope and determination to take it. You yourself received the gift of an organ donation, the gift of life. And your efforts since have given more people the second chance in life that you cherish each and every day. And so it really is a privilege for me to have held the torch of life in my hands beside Denise here a moment ago. I never actually got the whole thing. Actually, we're going to pass it to you right now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I want to uh, I want to congratulate Venice on being Toronto's torch champion. I give the torch back to you. You made us all very proud, and I'm sure I speak. And I'm sure I speak for myself, Ontarians, and all your friends and classmates, including those who have come out here today from Westview Centennial Secondary School. Engaging young people is such a great way to carry this torch forward. Any one of us can be a champion for organ donations. We can encourage family, friends, and people in our community to talk about giving the gift of life. Too many of our fathers, our mothers, our sons, and our daughters are on the organ transplant waiting list. Over 1,600 people in Ontario alone. But awareness can make all the difference, and that's why Torch for Life is so important. The message is clear and simple. Anyone can be an organ donor. I want to thank the Trillium Gift of Life Network for coordinating organ transplant programs in Ontario and for getting results. We need more organ donations in Ontario so that people, like George, get the second chance at life that they deserve. Together we're making important progress in awareness, but there is more to be done. Sadly, every three days, the organ donation waiting list is one person less because they couldn't wait any longer, they couldn't survive. It doesn't have to be that way. And I believe that with people like Venice spreading the word, together with the other young people here and right across Canada, that we can and will do better. So let's keep working together, because an organ donation can bring life back to someone. Let each one of us be a champion for organ donations, because each one of us can give the gift of life. Thank you very much.
First, a man who has devoted years of his life promoting organ donation is about to pay a high price for his work. George Marcello has been paying for his latest campaign out of his own pocket, and he's now on the verge of losing his house. Here's Sean Mallon now with a story you'll only see on Global. Okay, thank you. For 10 years since he received his first liver transplant, George Marcello has been on a marathon campaign to promote organ donation. But now he's hit a financial roadblock. Right now I need help. Like, I need help now. There's Marcello just two weeks ago with the Premier supporting his latest campaign. But he says the government has turned down all his applications for grants, and he's only been able to garner minimal corporate sponsorship. To keep the campaign going, Marcello put a third mortgage on his own house. He's $50,000 in the hole with no way of paying it back. Foreclosure looms, and he could be losing his home as early as March. It's kind of depressing and sad, a little bit of anger. He just cares so deeply, and it's made quite a real difference to a lot of recipients. Patty Latourneau says Marcello gave her huge moral support as her husband awaited a liver transplant, which came through last fall. He really needs to get some help in, in uh, pulling, pulling funders to him. Marcello is asking all three parties at Queen's Park for support in getting him a $50,000 grant to repay him for what he's shelled out, and $50,000 more to allow him to finish the current campaign. It's sad when you've got budgets of multi-millions of dollars, Ministry of Health, uh, the Trillium Gift of Life Foundation, and we can't find a modest sum to keep George out there on the road uh, where he's most effective. A spokesperson for the health minister says Marcello is welcome to submit a grant application to the Trillium Gift of Life Foundation. If he does, he could also submit this personal reference, a video from the, the Premier's own life. website. And your efforts since have given more people the second chance at life that you Sean Mallon, Global News. And every day. And so it really is a privilege for Marcello's organization is a registered charity and for more information on his work, the website is www.stepbystep.ca. It's common knowledge there aren't enough organs for all the patients in need of transplant surgery in this province and across the country. Public education results in some success, but it comes at a cost. Yes, case in point, George Marcello, the recipient of two liver transplants, who for the last 10 years has been tirelessly promoting organ donation. Now that's put his financial future in jeopardy, and he's looking to Queen's Park to come through with some much needed funds so he doesn't end up losing his home. Meanwhile, a number of legislative proposals designed to free up more, organ, more organs rather, died when the election was called. One of them, a controversial plan by NDP House Leader Peter Cormos, placing reverse onus on people who actually don't want to donate their organs. And Messrs. Cormos and Marcello join us now at Queen's Park. George, let's start with you. What kind of support are you seeking from the taxpayers of the province of Ontario? Well, I've invested uh, $60,000 as a result of uh, mortgaging my uh, house uh, to do the uh, campaign, the SOS uh, campaign from St. John's to uh, Mississauga for the last five months. And uh, it's probably going to cost another 50000 to complete the uh, campaign uh, from Hamilton to actually Igalut, uh, none of it. And uh, uh, I'm hoping the we could get uh, funding for that and it'll be a total of about a hundred thousand dollars you spent oh you're, you're talking about out of your own pocket over a hundred thousand dollars you've mortgaged your home i'm mark some I'm people talking. will call you crazy i mean george as if it's not bad enough that you've had two liver transplants you're you're spending all this of your own money i mean some people might think you're really going over the top with this i know but you know what mark we, we are so close in solving this this crisis it's like every day i wake up I, we're one day closer, you know, and, and if you were with me on the road, Mark, and you've seen all these students that are putting their heart and their passion as they're carrying the torch, and, and to know that there's over 100 students waiting to carry this torch, I don't know, Mark, maybe you would do the same thing. I don't know. It, it's a noble cause, but Peter, ultimately, it must be left to the politicians such as yourself to try and do something so that there are more organs available. Do you intend to reintroduce your bill calling for the harvesting of organs unless people have significantly designated some kind of written objection? No, I, I intend to reintroduce legislation once again that's going to radically transform the culture around organ donation. Right now we have a presumed denial. People are presumed not to want their organs to be used. I say that's very un-Ontarian, very un-Canadian. And I'm going to be introducing legislation to generate 
generate, provoke more debate? Look, George Marcello has been crisscrossing this country for a decade now, selflessly, with great passion. The candidate doesn't have a stronger advocate out there on the ground for organ donation. He's done a tremendous job. And, 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 I, I, and I, I think he, he, it warrants our support. He should be commended for that, but I want to get back to the bill. Are you going to, in fact, ask again for a, what, in effect, is a reverse onus? I'm going to be introducing legislation yet once again that is going to dramatically shift the perspective around organ donation that is going to acknowledge the presumption that Canadians want their organs to be used and don't want for a medical team or health professionals to have artificial hurdles put before them at a time where speed is of the essence. I guess, I guess that's a, a diplomatic way of saying yes and I'll take it as such. But, but in that case, if a reverse onus in the case of let's say tax assessment is is wrong and we all you know can see that it is wrong why is a reverse onus in organ donation right look when i die i got a 94 chef pickup and a whole bunch of organs i have no use for any of them come and get them uh tax assessment is a totally different thing we're talking about things for which you no longer have any use whatsoever those organs are dead weight for the pallbearers i'm saying let's get rid of the artificial barriers to health teams and medical professionals who have to look for documents look for consent before they can retrieve an organ use an organ to save another life for, from a person who has no use for it whatsoever. He's dead. George, what's your opinion on, uh, while well, Peter introduced this private member's bill and sounds to me like he may reintroduce it, what are your feelings on it? Well, as everybody knows, I, I've been uh, advocating this now for the past 10 years and that, those are my personal opinion. Uh, it's not representing our campaign as a whole. I'm not uh, asking the students that are carrying the torch to, to advocate that. They're making up their own minds. But my personal opinion that it's long overdue, uh, Britain is, is now probably going to be introducing it very shortly, and it's the first Anglo-Saxon country that's going to be doing that. I'm sure once it goes into law there, it'll have a, a big effect here on Canada. And I think everybody's going to start realizing that uh, the time has come for this, you know, uh, especially if you were in Montreal with me, Mark, and you've seen the two-year-old girl right now as we speak, Zoe Bernard, she's waiting for a heart transplant, and she's fighting every day uh, to, to just survive every day. And if this presumed consent was in, intact already, I bet you she would have received her heart by now. So that's right. really the story. Well, let's bring up perhaps another option, something we came across today. The state legislature in uh, Vermont, Vermont, as a matter of fact, is looking at the option of paying people. In other words, they would, they would not have to pay for their driver's license if they sign on the dotted line for life. I mean, talk about a real financial uh, impact on it. I think a lot of people would take that. It may sound gruesome, but yeah, you're getting paid for your organs. But wouldn't that perhaps do more than a reverse onus? You're not getting paid for an organ. You're getting paid to exercise the choice that uh, even I acknowledge has to exist. Uh, we don't even have that in the province of Ontario. Uh, the government had an opportunity to adopt a, a, a regime whereby people would be required to indicate yes or no on a driver's license. They, they turned that down. That was the Frank Cleese bill. Uh, Vermont de demonstrates that there are some meaningful things that can be done right here and now with zero cost and without there being any need for any protracted debate. I still insist that we've got to radically change the culture around organ donation and we're going to do that by debating okay. Okay. concepts like presumed intent. Here you have a problem though. There were meetings that were held in order to deal with your proposal. They couldn't draw flies. I mean, pe people didn't want to go and talk about it. Don't you think maybe the public just can't warm up to the idea of, of, uh, of that proposal of reverse onus? You no, know, that blue ribbon panel set up by Mr. McGinty was going to discuss the broad range of, of organ donation. Obviously, it wasn't well promoted. It wasn't well undertaken. It wasn't reaching out there to the community. I, I, I go with George Marcello to a high school, and I see him reaching out to, to hundreds and thousands of kids at a time uh, who respond very positively. Why that high-priced blue ribbon panel couldn't do that beats me. Hmm. Uh, George, you've got the uh, torch runs going through Hamilton tomorrow. Uh, tell us, tell us something about it. How can we? Okay, help? I'm, I'm, we're going to show that Hamilton kids are tough. Uh, snowstorm or no snowstorm. Not a boy. Uh, Adrian Bradley uh, from Sir John A. McDonald will be there, ready to carry the torch at 12 noon at the fountain at James and King. He's going to get an excellent escort from uh, Hamilton's finest, and we're going to have uh, MPP uh, Andrea Horvath there and M MP. Uh, 
David Christofferson and the mayor and uh, 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 chief of police, uh, they're all going to be there. Outstanding. And let's show what Hamilton can do, even even if there is a snowstorm. We're going to carry that. Ah, torch. snow never stopped us before. 12 noon at James and King tomorrow. Uh, George, uh, best of luck as always. George Marcello. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Cormos, uh, thank you, as Lawrence. Well. Pleasure. Bye bye. by a passion to help save lives. That is courageously going to uh, carry the torch in this uh, snowstorm. Members of the Hamilton Police Service were out in the snow and the slush to run with a torch bearer. It's a little slippery out there, but uh, if you go slow enough, you can keep your traction. It was slippery, it's just the puddles. <laughs> they were backing 14-year-old Adrian Bradley of Hamilton, who was carrying the torch of life through the city, part of a cross-country relay to encourage organ donation. He had the full support of the mayor. And it's not me running, it's some other guy, so that's, that's even better. Al Sweeney, CHCH News, Hamilton. So cute. Well, it is one move that can save a life. Later in Health and Lifestyle, the chilly jog raising awareness about organ donation.